What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. I am your host, your bastard of ceremonies, Reckless Rex Ruger. That, of course, is the Freddie Mercury puppet, as if the teeth were a dead giveaway. We're back with another banger of an episode of Pod Scum. You might be looking at me saying, I know you. You look damn familiar. Well, that's because you're looking at the mug of Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. Take a look, folks. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a look just because I love the view. Mm. And of course, it's all made possible by the product that does it. You want the quaff like Roth? Use it. But I will give you my typical disclaimer. You probably won't look this good. And that's awfully hard to do. Almost impossible. But you can probably look pretty damn good. I don't know. It's not a miracle in a can. So you got to deal with what you're working with. I, of course, have the Roth jeans. So <laughs> I'm blessed. But hey. Uh, let me first uh, kick this show off by saying, uh, you know, let me do my obligatory uh, 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 promoting here. Put on the promoter's hat for a minute. Of course, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook. You got to do it, folks. We're in the we're in the age of technology. Uh, you got to be out there. You got to have a Facebook page. It's the place to go uh, if you want to find out what's doing on pod scum when new episodes are coming out uh uh and any other thing that i decide to post on there basically as i say the ramblings of a madman i never know what i'm going to put up there uh but my guest is here so i'm gonna shut the fuck up enough i'll pimp my fucking show later because i can't make my guests wait we got to get down to it folks i mean come on go frank how's it going man how are you brother you good I'm good. Oh, it's great to see you, man. I lost you though, man. Let's have a look. Your 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 your, your camera. Uh, your ca Frank. How are you, buddy? I'm good, man. Are you? Can you oh, see me? Yeah. I'm. Uh, listen, man. It's always good to fucking see you, man. Uh, uh, and and uh, first of all, man, I can't remember specifically what we talked about last year. Uh, uh, when we chatted, man. But I want to kind of go back to the beginning a little bit, man, because you know, because you are so uh, you, uh, uh, involved in so many cool musical projects, man. Uh, uh, w when you go back in time, man, was there a specific album or an artist or a, a song that really kicked it off for you and really got you on this musical? journey Ooh, that's a good question um i probably have to say when i was in a bar we were living my mama took me and my younger brother to live in uh, on a greek island mykonos and we were in an irish bar and i remember sitting as a young kid on a stool and they had a tv in the corner and it was showing some music videos and it was Doves Cry by Prince. Yeah. And I was just transfixed on this guy climbing out of a bathtub, singing and just looking amazing, singing amazing. The tune was like just badass. And as I've grown older now, it's probably one of my favorite 80s songs of all time, Doves no, Cry. Yeah, no doubt. I I think when we talked the first time, man, we shared our love and affinity for Prince, man. I mean, yeah, it, listen, he still transfixes me. Yeah, and me as well, you know. And you know, still a, still a lot of music that's probably going to come out that's going to keep doing that to us. You know what I mean? I hope so. I hope so, man. So, uh, so your particular instrument though, uh, 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 is is the drums. Yeah, drums and bass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and so in the fun loving criminals, uh, uh, you play the drums. Is there a drummer out there that you think has had the most impact uh, on your playing style? On my playing style, I don't know because I've never really, I've, I've never really took any lessons. So I'm, I'm self-taught, but uh, so I don't know whether or not I even have uh, a, 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 a so-called style. I don't know, but I know the people that influence me massively, and it's always the same two people. It's John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, just because his heavy foot and his solidness and being able to keep that groove yeah um it was really the he, he was for me when i look back and i've said this before in interviews he was the early start to break beat and hip-hop beats when you isolate led zeppelin yeah. arts i agree with you yeah stomping hip-hop beats you know now what we know is hip-hop but right but him and sheila Ree, sheila Ree for the um just the flamboyancy and uh, and just looking cool all the time when she plays 
Like yeah. Looking, she's having fun. Do you know what I mean? Loves her uh, instrument. They're, yeah. 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 They're my two. They're, so always Sheila Ree and, um, and John Bonham. And, and uh, uh, when Fun Love and Criminals get together to create, uh, uh, and uh, in the last two years you did Roosevelt Sessions and then Capistrano Sessions, when you guys get together, man, because the music is so so interesting and so unlike other stuff that's out there right now, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to, it's always been that way to take Fun Love and Criminals, and there's not many bands out there that you can do this with. You can't really stuff you guys into a box and say that you fit into a specific genre because you're coming from so many different musical directions. But when you guys get together, man, What's the creative process like? Is it very collaborative? Does someone have the lion's share of the ideas? Because I, I look at all you guys, and I think you're all so uh, 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 creatively prolific. Um, no, I think that definitely, like, um, it's n n nothing's one-sided. I, I think uh, over the time, because Fun Loving Criminals has been, you know, uh, I, I've been with my partner in crime now for – well, I've known him for 25 years. And, yeah, yeah. You've been uh, in the band since 2003, though, which is crazy to think, over 20 years now. Yeah, 22, 23 years, whatever yeah. it is. But um, so it's kind of like we, we know the sound. We, we have a certain sound that we, that, that, that we go for. What I mean by that is, like you said, everything's different. It's like a mixed bag of snakes. And yeah, that, that, that's what I love. You know, obviously that comes from, um you know my love for prince and fast love for different genres of music my love yep. for different genres of music but we do have like this even though they're all different something links them together with fun loving criminals um there's a the, the, there's somewhat of a style a bit, a bit of an un, an orthodox style I'd, I'd i'd go as far to say that fun loving criminal music is in that kind of black aliciousness for, for for dudes that are predominantly white we, yeah. we're much influenced by um black music whether it be reggae r and b uh, soul yeah. hip hop you know they're all genres that have been really um you know black culture has been at the for forefront of them so th there's always that in us um and i think that bleeds into the different sounds of a uh, following criminals but no no one really has the lion's share how it normally works is you, you know fast will probably come up with some beats um it'll send some beats up to me and then i normally my first port of call really is writing lyrics and getting together melody lines and and like top melodies and figuring out choruses and stuff like that and then um that's normally first and foremost. So it, it, the, the kind of the, the kind of share there is very equal. Right? It'll come up with some beats. I'll get hold of it. I'll start hearing some melodies or, or, or some lyric ideas. I'll put them down. Then I normally move over to keyboards, bass, live drums, and then I'll I'll get some ideas like that. Send them back down to Fast in his studio, and because I have a studio where I live as well, um, up in Leicester in the UK. Yeah. Um, we kind of go back and forth and it, it, then it just becomes about refining it. You know, sometimes it'll, it'll send something up and I'm like, no, I'm not really on that tip of that one. I'm thinking this one. It'll say, explain what you mean and vice versa. I'll be like, well, I'm not really sure what tip you're coming off on that. And you know what I mean? So we have it very equal. And the beauty about Naeem is Naeem knows that there's a sound that's been there for decades. Yes. And he's, very, he's very respectful of it. So he kind of comes in, he's like, well, what are you thinking? We give him a rough idea of what we're thinking, but then we do leave it open for him to be, to put his personality into it as well. Um, so it does work. It, it works well. I think it it works better now because you have people that like to work that like to hustle in the studio do you know what i mean so right. we're not slow with ideas and we can normally do stuff relatively quick and i know when i'm in the studio working i will for me to really put some good work down in the studio i'm one of them people that needs to say right the next 14 days I'm going in the studio and I'll be doing 15 hour days every day for 14 days until yeah. I'm burnt out and then I'll leave it 
and then I'll, I'll step away for a couple of weeks. Then I'll go back and see what I did. And it be give my brain and my soul long enough away from it to then discover, is this any good or not? Um, so the, the ideas come quick. The refining it takes a little bit longer. Um, but it is very good to be on the same vibe and tip as uh, as my music partner fast and with naeem you know touching it up wonderfully with his guitar parts you know what yeah. i mean yeah and 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 i i also know from being on you guys' website that you guys are out there playing live like crazy uh you've been doing it for so long you still get the same charge out of touring it is kind of a nomadic existence you're doing a lot of touring i know as i get older and i, I don't have a job where i you know i have to be travel or whatever but you do kind of like your creature comforts you like being at home a little bit more as you get older i mean like i said i'm not a musician or whatever but do you still like being out there on the road and kind of that be you know all over the place in different places I do. Um, it's gr grueling sometimes and exhausting. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I think I'm on 78 flights of uh, this year up to now, and a lot of them are long haul flights. Like you, that works out to be about a flight and a half. Yeah. Every, every <laughs> yeah. Year. That's a um, lot. <laughs> but uh, and then you put the driving on top of that and all that. But you know, let's be honest. It's it, there's so many more in awful jobs that people do in the world Without don't, a doubt, yeah. <laughs> don't get me wrong I, I know that we're fortunate and you know I, I think more so in the last two years where me and fast have like really hustled to try and build the name back up of as fun of criminals as a, a as a good live band which we've, we've always had that yeah. kind of wavered a bit the, towards the last seven years um but you know now we've got a positive outfit you know with the introduction of naeem and uh, and we like to play and you know it is nice being in these countries and um you know we, we've just been hitting it really hard i think we've still got about eight shows left just before christmas um just the very end bits of the capistrano tour that we've been doing yeah. but i've just got back from eastern europe bro and it's just like the people are just awesome um the architecture is great we had a couple of days off where we could actually go and look at stuff because a lot of the time you know it looks gla glamorous on instagram and stuff but you know a lot of the time it's get off the plane get in a car get to the airport yeah. get a few hours sleep get up get in another car go to the music venue sound check do some press quickly have an hour and a half to get some dinner iron your suit on stage and then ground dog day yeah and it's been like that yeah for you know the last two years i think we've done 180 shows in the last two years so that's a lot of shows per year do you yeah. know what i mean and then what uh, about tour what about touring in the states does that still happen as much or do you guys think that you're more viable over in europe we would love to tour more in the states we did yeah. a tour about a year and a half ago now um over there and it was it, it was difficult but I, I mean i don't really know what we expected we've not been there for such a long time you know the last time the band really toured over there they were opening up for you too yeah uh, and these were massive arena shows and it was great and then you know fun loving criminals blew up more over in england and europe so they kind of stayed over here and then i joined and it, you know we've we've always been bigger outside of america so we've never really gone back yeah now and again we played the odd show in la and the odd show in new york and they were fun to a few hundred people but we were like, all right, let's go on tour. Let's do all, all of the East, the East, you know. Yeah. So we did, and it was fucking hard. And we, we were playing to like half full rooms, and it was a bit soul destroying, I suppose, a little bit. But then at the same time, it's like, well, what do we expect? We've not been to this territory for so long. But, you know, we've been talking to some great people, some great agents. And I, feel, I think the way, and we've kind of seen a trend here, bro, of, um, you know a few bands that go out and do these double headliners triple headliners you know about this kind of thing yes. you yeah it was, it was quite it was quite new to me i only started seeing it a couple of years ago in america so you know you'll get that british invasion of say um you know three bands that that, that would tour together that help each other out like would go on the road but probably big bands from the 90s or something so that's something we're looking at because we'd love to get back um to the states obviously fast would love that as well it's his home country you know and yeah yeah uh, 
but we, we, we we'll keep pushing on that like we, we've we've done so much over the last two years and then the big news is is uh, that you know the new album's just about finished nearly there um which it will then go over to our kind of fourth member which is tim latham the art the, the legendary tim latham yeah. mixed who's done all the fun of the criminal albums and who's a fantastic talent from your homeland yep. um grammy award winner you know just a, an amazing set of ears and a great mixer of music so it's it's being sent to him as as i'm as we're speaking and that would be the first studio album proper original album in 14 years so that's pretty huge. That's coming out in 2025. Um, Wait a minute. So, like, when you say proper studio album, so uh, I and correct me if I have any of this wrong. Uh, 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 in, uh, you know, Roosevelt sessions and Capistrano sessions were EPs, but in 2019, what was uh, 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 I'm drawing a blank here. Was another Mimosa also an EP? No, that was uh, a, an album of as covering. You know, doing cover versions. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Which which really wasn't something me and Fast wanted to do. Um, but we did it. Um, and, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, but it's not, obviously, it's not an original record. It's just a record full of um, cover versions. So is, that something, so is that something that the label urges you to do? Because you're saying, like, it wasn't really what we wanted to do. No, at the time, our old singer just had nothing in him as far as writing any kind of uh, okay. gotcha. lyric stuff like that. So it was a means to get us in the studio. So we'd have something out which then enables shows, but it never really, it just wasn't something that we, me and Fast got extremely excited about because we like writing our own music. You know, sure. there's one or two covers on there that I love. My mum always wanted to hear us do White Shade of Pale. So I got that on there, which is yeah. kind of cool. And um, um, I think we do a pretty good version of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, Great version. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and, and, and it was fun doing morning by um you know uh some some of the big rap ones what we did we did the the ice cube one and we did the biggie smalls warning one yeah which was which was loads of fun um to do but it's it it, it isn't a it's not really a fun of the criminals album of original songs and that's what this new one's going to be so well that did seem to be a trend that started around covid because you did start and, and i realized people couldn't get out and play live gigs you were seeing a lot of people around covid time you know they had to get their creativity out and you were seeing a lot of singles and a lot of ep so i was wondering if that was the trajectory in which fun loving criminals was going to go but you, but now you're saying you guys are going to put out a fully realized lp yeah i mean uh, you know i, I was and I, I was saying to you, it was me that was pushing the EPs because it's just a little bit less pressure when it comes to sure. writing, um, you know, writing lyrics. Um, writing lyrics is always the hard thing for for, for any band. You know, yeah. music to musicians can come quite easily. Um, sitting down and writing a story or sitting down and writing something from the soul with a great melody line, that takes a little bit longer than put in some assemble chords together you know what i mean it, it really, sure. really, you really have to dig deep so for me i was like and at the time you know i was uh, I, I was doing the writing on the roosevelt and on the uh, on the other one and it was like i don't want the pressure you know we just had a lineup change i was like let's take it easy let's let's give the fans one ep it'd be kind of cool the band when they first started started with an, uh, a couple of eps so it was like we went 360 which was kind of uh, kind of cool in a retro way and then we put uh, Roosevelt out and it, fans loved it, which was great for us. So we put Capistrano out. Really, the Capistrano come from us doing that, um, doing them dates in the States, them yeah. stories that I wrote are really from that kind of road trip of a tour. Um, and then I was I, I was kind of like, okay, well, let's get ready to do a, a, another EP. If we do anything, it's another EP. And we were just like, you know what? We're playing the we're playing really good. We're we're probably playing that the best that the best the band have played. Fans are loving it. We've been so proactive in doing shows. And just to see the fans stick with us, stick by us, come and you know, like I say, we've just done nearly all this year and like ninety-eight percent of every show's been sold out. That's and great. it's 
know what? Fucking fans deserve a full album. Let's do a full album. Yeah. You know? And uh, and, and Fast was like, yeah, you know, you, you know, he, he said it as well. We kind of both said it at the same time. So like, right, and this is what I mean, bro. When it was like, okay, we've got all, we've got the music together. Right, let's knuckle down, and that's when it's kind of like, uh, that's when a switch goes in my mind. It's like, okay, I need to go in the studio now, and I'll be in the studio. You know, when I'm getting serious about the studio, when I start making pat lunches, you know, and ice. <laughs> And ice coolers full of sandwiches and snacks. <laughs> You're hunkering down. <laughs> that's on my shoulder, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm and I'm walking. You know, yeah. I'm walking down to my studio, which is like three miles away from my house. I'm like, got your lunch, got your lunch pail. Yeah, <laughs> got it all there, bro. You know what I mean? So I don't have to leave the room. I don't have yeah. to leave the room to use the bathroom, and then I'm in that room, yeah. hard, just working away. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. The, the new record is uh, it's sounding there's, there's a there's a couple of absolute classics, um, fun loving, and there's one or two curveballs in there as well. You know, it's, it's nice on this one because there's a bit, there's, there's a bit of rock and roll on this new record as well, which is something that I've yeah. wanted. You know, we 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 are these like people say, oh, the kings are cool with this kind of laid back lounge funk hip hop thing, and that's wicked. And I, 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 you know, me and Fast love all that, but at the same time. When you got a big crowd in front of you, you want them motherfuckers to jump up and down. You know what I mean? Sure. So, yeah. With some rock and roll. So that's yeah. the new record as well. So it's very exciting. Twenty twenty five will be for us. Well, I, 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 cause I, I was going to ask you because music just has so many genres nowadays, and it seems like, and I talked to a lot of metal guys on here too, and, and everything is like broken. Like it used to just be heavy metal, and then thrash, and then death metal, and then you see all this stuff all broken down into smaller and smaller, like little terms and, and genres. When people ask you flat out, and I don't know how often do you, people ask you this, man, but when they ask you what genre fun loving criminals are, like I just heard you say lounge funk, you know what I mean? Like, what do you tell them? Well, you see, I think really, this is like a little, I'm just adjusting myself here. Um, this is like a interesting, well, one, it's, 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 a, it's another cool question that, that makes me think. But as I think about stuff, like what in the past have I said to people when they say, no, oh, what's yeah. your band like then? You know? Yeah, like, yeah. You have to sit there for a minute and go, well, what is the band actually like? And all I ever say is, it, it, my, my classic one is, it's a mixed bag of snakes. You could pull, pull a, tip all our tracks in a, in a bag and put your hand in and pull it out. And everyone's going to be slightly different. Yeah. But that can also be the reason why I think following criminals aren't necessarily as big as you too. Because it's very hard for the media. The media, you're hard work as a band when you can't be pigeonholed. You're hard work for a radio conglomerate when you can't be pigeonholed. Right. You're hard work for TV if you can't be pigeonholed. You know, it's it. it people love to be able to sell you within a movement so if you're slightly got heavy guitars right these guys fit into rock let's play these and let's get them played on all the rock radio stations you know okay these, these guys these are classical let's get them all on the class you know everyone has a thing with this it's like one day we'll be r b the yeah. next day we'll be punk rock right. the next day we'll be beastie boys hip-hop the yep. next day we'll be laid back with some jazz vibe lounge shit yeah and it's like but but to me, that's why probably the likes of me and Fast that have been doing this for a long, long time, and Naeem, because I also write with Naeem with Uncle Frank, we get very, very bored and probably end up walking away. And what you'll be walking away from is a fan base that is bought into how we operate and how we right. sound. Right. You know, we get the cool, we get super cool people come and see following criminals, people that are accepting of other genres of music. So as far as I'm concerned, the Fun Loving Criminal fans and the Uncle Frank fans are the coolest fucking fans out there because yeah. they're not switched off to certain things. You know what I mean? Like you had that kind of thing where it was, you know, back in the day, if you were, you would, 
be seen to be wearing a Metallica shirt. I talk Clearly. about it all the time on this show. Yeah. And and I'm 51 years old. And I remember a time when, yeah, if you were representing metal and you were wearing the patch on your jacket and you were wearing the shirts and someone found out behind closed doors that you might be listening to some pop music. I mean, you'd be called the dreaded poser, you know, when I was growing up and you'd be ostracized. You would almost feel like you were being drummed out of the, uh, of the metal community, you know? Absolutely. You, you had know. to be representing all the time. All the time, and it's, it's nice like, that those it's nice that those walls have come down now, and people are more accepting in this day and age of of people having eclectic taste. Yeah, and I think that is. Um, I, I've always been like that. I mean, I mean my, I'm very lucky that I had super cool parents. You know, my mum listened to a lot of uh, black exploitation music. She loved reggae music. She loved. Um, you know, artists like Shah Day. Um, but then on the other end, she'd like Dusty Springfield. On the other end, she liked Janis Joplin. And then my dad, it was Led Zeppelin. It was Queen. It was like Chicago. It was ELO. It was all, you know. And so I had this mix mash of all this stuff. And then I was the kid of the 80s. So I was there for the birth of hip hop. You know, when Walk This Way dropped well, by Run DMC, I was right. like 13, 14 years old and I freaked out. And so you put that in with everything, obviously what you're going to get from me is a whole world of different paints on the palette. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I, you know, I love hard rock. I love classic rock. I love soul music. I love reggae music. I play in one of the biggest reggae bands in the world because of it. You know, I have an understanding of all this, all this music. And, I, I, and I'm just one of them. I'm one of them people that gets off on, all people's talents and all people's sounds. And I, I think that's how it should be. That Saying that, though, i got no problem with people that just like metal music. Fair play. If that's what you like, knock yourself out. I, I, I love some kinds of metal music, you know. But I just feel like fun-loving criminal fans, Uncle Frank fans, they're like people that are in my gang because yeah, they, sure. they want to... They want to wear different shit in one concert. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And and uh, so, yeah, and I, I don't want to take the focus off your other projects. I certainly want to hear about those, too. I don't want to just focus on Fun Loma Criminals. So so tell me about what what's going on with your other musical endeavors. You mentioned Uncle Frank uh, and uh, still doing Fatal Star. Uh, no, we don't really do Fatal Star because it's it, it, it's that was kind of a, that was of the time. Um, and there's some fantastic bits of mu music from it, but we just we don't really have the time to, we don't really have the time after time to do Uncle Frank because obviously Fun Loving Criminals eats a lot of the diary up and, you know, um, kind of takes a, a president as far as working, making a living. Um, right. But where we can fit everything else in, we fit everything so everything else and what we do what we have done of late is we've took some of the amazing um fatal star works that me and naya Matt have had and we've kind of molded them into <clears throat> uncle frank so we get them beautiful melodies there's one or two songs on the on the latest uncle frank album that have come uh, are old songs in our vault from fatal star so we still get to flex that muscle as well um but the, I think the big thing, with, we've got some shows coming up um, in December with Uncle Frank, which is going to be great, because two of them shows are up in Scotland, in Edinburgh and Glasgow, December. Um, I think the first week of December, I can't think of the dates right off the top of my head. But um, they, you, if, if anyone's interested that's watching this, that's up in Scotland or over in the, in the UK, all you've got to do is go to www.unclefrankband.com and all okay. the tickets are on there i can't remember them right off the top of my head but um we're going to be doing me and i'm going to be doing two acoustic shows in edinburgh and glasgow but what's special about these it's going to be the very very first time we'll be screening um the movie documentary which is something i've been working on for about seven last seven years eight years i think it is and that's a, a documentary film about you know, my life from a young child off a council estate, or as you guys call it, the projects, kind of making my way, trying to hit a goal of being in a big international rock band tour yeah. in the world. And it's my story from young getting all the way to it. 
and playing in some of the biggest bands in the world and just that journey but the bigger slice of that film is dealing with mental health as well which is some that i've been played with for most of my adult life so you know same it, yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah yeah so it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful tale and it's an insight to life on the road and how it it can be quite grueling and it can take chunks out of you but also it's it's a cool story of of a, of a young kid that didn't really do too good at school got a lot of mental issues but i had enough about myself to push to go into a career that i wanted to go in and and i'm still in now at the age yeah. i and it, so the film's really about that so i'm very excited about that um now it's a, it's like a screening at two of our shows so it's just for me to see what the audience think before i then pass it on to people that will try and get it sold to the likes of netflix amazon sky arts bbc you know or, or, all that that's making a film is like doing a record you go in the studio you make the records you've got this great record then you've got to give that record to somebody like a manager or a label manager and then they'll try and get you a record deal it's the same shit with a film if yeah. people are in this and ever wondered what it's like but it's twice as long we've been doing this now for you the film was just about to come out and then covid hit so we had to put the brakes on the film and then we started re-looking at the film because it was a little bit too long so we wanted to edit it down a little bit but then two massive things happened in my life that we can't put a film out without telling you that i joined ub40 with mr ali campbell the right. biggest baggy band in the world it's like yeah. shit now we've got to go back and film a load more you gotta shit. insert that in there yeah, yeah and insert <laughs> that in. so it's been like a, a weird and wonderful time that is but finally we've put it drew a line under it and it, it's it's just about ready i've watched half of it with the fresh edit i've got to watch the other half by tomorrow night because then i've got to sign off on it and say that i'm happy with it and, and now then, what will the and now what will the title of it be it's called to be frank to be frank okay and and it, it, is that just a working title for right now like will that change at all like if you decide to put it out or or uh, is, is that title cemented yeah that's the title to be oh, frank i love it yeah, yeah. i love it yeah and um, and, 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 and uh, a lot like i was talking about you know those walls coming down as far as like you know people embracing certain different types of music it's nice that the walls have come down where where, where people can have discussions about mental health now too that's important it is important and i think it's, it's not, this is in no way to upset um the the, the the female species of the world but i often find that that females are just great women women in general are just great at, at talking about their problems with other women great and, yeah. and, and you know and that's fantastic as males that are stubborn proud full of testosterone full of yep. we tend to not talk about our yep. feelings internalize yeah. yeah yeah and um uh you know I'm, I'm, I'm being quite black and white here and then there's all the people in the middle that that will deal with stuff how they deal with it uh, you know um all different walks of life gay straight whatever you know what i mean like the it but i know i'm generalizing but i know most men in the world like probably fear talking about their feelings especially to other, other men do you know what i mean it's like oh, yeah we can't do that we've got to go out and earn money and, and blah, blah blah and it's like you know and that's why you know the the stats don't lie you know people that take their own lives it's predominant yeah. high numbers in, in men with mental health now you know for a long long time i was I, I was following some instructions to say that you should never really talk about your mental health because all it does is feed your feed your subconscious well that's bullshit you know what yeah. i mean if, if you've got problems you, uh, you you need to vent and um and so i have over the last i don't know probably 10 years bro i have been quite outspoken as far as um uh, 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 as as mental health granted some of mine i've probably not helped with my lifestyle um you know there was y years of substance abuse sure um, it, goes, it, almost goes, it almost goes hand in hand with it i think a lot of times 
I it think does. so. You feel like you need a crutch, and sometimes that's the crutch. And you know, in the world of rock and roll, that stuff is so easily accessible. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I stopped doing a lot of that stuff 10, 10 years ago, fifteen years ago for for something. I've never been a big drinker, and um, but yet I'm still left with that that thing. The worst thing, really, about it things like anxiety which I, I, I struggle with you know fear and the fearing of doing normal day stuff like yeah you know, i've been crippled before with so much fear and anxiety that I've, I, I've not been able to even do a simple thing like drop my kid off school because i've locked myself in a room and i don't come out yeah put me on stage in front of 100 fascinating people, yeah fucking, yeah that's nothing to me it means nothing yeah. I was just going to say, that's fascinating because you can get up there like at festivals and be in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people, right? There's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's, it, it's, a, it, it's a fascinating, you know, it's sad and debilitating, but in a way it's fascinating. Like the things that we'll push through and be able to do, then the other simple things that'll just completely cripple us. Yeah, it, it's it's super strange, but it, it you know, the, the thing, and, and it, I talk about it in the film, uh, that uh, over the years, I've become an expert about this, but in typical Virgo fashion, I'm fantastic at giving people advice. Do <laughs> yeah. it, you know what I mean? Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, not only yeah. so good at following it, but we're great at giving it. <laughs> but um, diversion is the biggest thing, and I think somebody asked me the other day, "God, like you, you're doing all these flights, you've done all these tour dates over the last few years, more so than you've ever done, and you know, how do you do that?" And I think I need to do it because when you're somebody that has a super creative mind if it's not being used and you're sit doing nothing that's when the voices creep in yeah yeah and hard where if you've got an agenda every day you've got flights to catch you've got press to do you've got a show to play you've got an audience to play for you're more driven yeah yes yeah it's, it's, it helps you push through it it helps you push through it rather than just being idle and just waiting for it to creep in yeah uh, and uh, and the other the other thing as well, which is something that I just don't like, is exercise is meant to be really key for people that struggle with um, yeah. anxiety stuff. But I've found that even something as simple as going for a walk. So if anyone's watching this and it has any of them feelings where you feel down, you feel blue, you feel anxious, you feel scared, you feel you, you feel fearful, you feel like the, the, everything's cloudy in there, just get up. To, Put your phone on the side and go for a fucking walk. Yeah. And back just to something as simple as that can help. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get on like, you know, I hate hard exercises, so I ain't gonna go away. Yeah. Yeah. The most I love is to be in the water and swim and so but basically get up and do something. It, it, I think it, we talked. I think we talked about this the last time, and I think we also uh, outside uh, outside of our, our shared affinity for prints. I think we talked about boxing the last time, which is my favorite sport. I think I remember you being a big boxing fan, if I remember our last conversation. And I think it's great when you see a guy show vulnerability. Like, I think a guy that's been really key is seeing a guy like Tyson Fury talking about mental health. I think that helps because you see this big guy, heavyweight champion of the world, but then you see, like, wow, you know, here's a guy that seems, uh, you know, damn near invincible, man. I, I, I mean, one of the toughest, baddest guys on the planet, but he struggles with it, too, and he's candid about it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's um, that stuff like that is great. Yeah, he, 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 he is fantastic. He's been very open as well. Yeah, I, it's took me a few years, dude. But I feel like you know, you, you over the years, you've had a few people go, "Yo, it's, you shouldn't talk like that, man. It's weak. You talk like that, you know." And it's like, and then you, you, you think, oh, am I being weak? So I'm talking about, oh, shut the fuck up. Maybe everyone's just bored of listening to me whine on and stuff. I'll be quiet. And I went a few years trying to keep it all inside. That just makes you feel worse. And then I think it's took me time. But I think the people that do stand up and say, you know what? I've got a bit of a problem. I struggle now and again with things like that. To me now, I see them as that they're the super strong ones. Right. So I like the fact that, that I can tell somebody or, or I've spoke at colleges before and you can, you know, the thing is when you struggle with anxiety, you're pretty quick at picking, spotting people that are also anxious people or fearful people. You Definitely. can, you know what I mean? You can tell. Yeah. yeah and, and it doesn't cost anything to say, to, are you all right, bro? You, you good? Do you want to talk yeah. about it? You know what I mean? And, and like you have a little chat and 
sometimes you just feel better even if it's like I, sometimes i felt like shit and then i'll be walking walking somewhere and some someone will just say good morning to you he said, oh, good morning. Yeah, you're having a good day. And just that little thing releases something in your mind where, oh, I feel a bit normal. Yeah. And the, the more bits that make you feel normal, the quicker that you can then. Yeah. It. It's like a, it's, this is a, this is an interesting one as well. Sorry to harp on about this. But oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I think this is sometimes even more important than even talking about the music, you know? Yeah, I do. But the, 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 the one thing that I would say is that, um it the 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 feeling of anxiety and the feeling it can give you being excited about something gives you the same feeling right sure but the trick is is to identify which one is you know because you've got this thing i think it's in the left hand side of your brain called the enigma line and when you're born it's set down here so your flight and fight mode is in the green let's say it's a temperature gauge right yep. and you, you your 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 reset level is when you're bored it's in the green when it rises and it hits up and goes into the red that's when fight flight and fight mode kick in and that's really what what i believe anxiety is so it will kick in and then it's you got to see the triggers they tell you when you talk to people as you try and try and find out what's triggering this and like but here's the downside with with, with anxiety sometimes you just don't know what triggers it you don't know why that particular day you've got up and you just feel full of fear and you think and i'm sitting there it happened to me not long ago it's like i had it for like two months solid while i've been going out on tour and i'm thinking what's triggered this now some major one of my friends like collapsed in front of me and it was really scary and there was nobody there i was in a dressing room behind a big festival so and i think it was that right i think that triggered me but it was the longest time for it to go back down for that for, 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 for that thing to go back down but there's sometimes to think um is my brain giving off mixed signals like am i excited about something and i'm getting it i'm getting it right it's just the mind is the fucking scariest place bro yeah it is it is and, uh, and sometimes being alone in your own head but i do uh, but, but uh, i do agree with you like about the talking about it though and 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 i do disagree with the people that say internalize it because I, I i you know i have my day job i work as a nurse i work in healthcare, and uh i don't work in mental health but i see people with mental health issues obviously you know just working in healthcare, and i mean I, it's an affliction like everything else you know if you had chest pain and you had it every single day for two or three weeks you wouldn't just say, I'm going to go on with this. You'd go to a fucking doctor and you'd address it. You know what I mean? I, I think mental illness is just like anything else. It, 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 if it's there, you, you know, you got to dig in deeper and you got to find that you got to get to the root of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, you do. And it's, um, but I think, you know, when, when I look at this, when I look at this film and I'm having, I'm having to watch it quite intensely now because I'm about to sign off on it. Right. It, it and I and I caught myself watching it as if it wasn't about me. I'm like watching a film, like yeah. I watch or a documentary. And I'm watching it, and I and it suddenly dawned on me: this guy does so much, so he doesn't have to hear voices in his fucking head. Yeah, he's completely driven. And when one cycles finish with fun of the criminals, oh, this guy jumps on Uncle Frank. When that's it, he jumps on you before it. And when that's when them shows are done, that's it. And then he goes back and he starts writing something else. And then he, you know, the only other the, the only other really savior is at the bottom of my feet here, and that's my my little dog. I think anybody that struggles with anxiety, get yourself a fucking dog. Dogs oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I, I mean, pet therapy, like we see it even in the nursing home that I work at. You know what I mean? When volunteers bring in animals, and there are proven facts that even stroking and petting an animal will lower stress, will bl will, will bring blood pressure down. I mean, uh, uh, you know, having an animal is 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 extremely therapeutic. Yeah, it's the best. She's a bit upset tonight, though, because it's um it's Halloween over here tonight. And yeah. <laughs> It's also Diwali, which um, is our big Indian Indian community that we have in Leicestershire. You know, Hindus, everybody, but you know, yeah. but they have a massive. Um, it's a celebration of light. It's basically like 
at Christmas, Charlie. Yeah, so um, what gets the dog nervous? Is there fireworks going on? Fireworks. She's been barking all night. So yeah, yeah. She's been good at. She's not barked in this interview so far. So bless her. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm curious because I, I'm curious because I wonder if it's more susceptible and there's more of a hypersensitivity when you are, are a creative person and have a heightened a heightened uh, 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 sensitivity because you do see a lot of people who get into the arts and who get into creative fields are plagued by a lot of mental illness. I, I you know I don't think that's necessarily a coincidence. You know. Absolutely not, because you know it's um, now. This is not to take. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be people that struggle with mental health that are not super creative people, right? But 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 it uh, from the studies that I've read and the, all the people I know, you're absolutely spot on. I believe that some people say, some experts say that you can't you can't you can't have anxiety unless you have somewhat of a creative mind. That's what some people believe. I don't know if that's true, but all I do know is you look at the rate of comedians, the rate of actors, the rate sure. of musicians, the rate of um, playwrights, the, 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 you know, people that are in the arts, whatever form that is, have unbelievable um, bouts with, anxiety depression and a lot of them take their own lives yeah you imagine for a minute how when i say this the mind is the most scariest place can you imagine how low you've got to be to jump off a fucking bridge or put i know I, I know or you know or you look at somebody like kurt cobain who's at the height of his career but he just can't deal with seeing his face everywhere and hearing his music everywhere and it, you know you know you would think he'd be enjoying the fucking ride and instead he's fucking freaking the fuck out you know Exactly. It's and I mean, crazy. you know, there's some, the, 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 and there's some that, that happened that really have affected me, like, and the people that I don't know, like when, when Robin Williams, that just done me. I was yeah. dead. Me I too. Was, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. I mean, just one of my favorite people on the planet. I love him. And mine, just a, a tremendous talent. Yeah. And writer, the fucking whole works. He was like, the guy was a, a yeah. doc. You know what I mean? And it's like, what? You yeah. killed him? How can Robin win? How can fucking Mork kill himself? I, like I know. I know. But there were a lot of people close to him who said that he was very tortured in the sense that, you know, that mind was almost always switched on. And sometimes, man, like, you, uh, you know, a lot of people say in his downtime when he was on movie sets or whatever, you know, he would almost withdraw because he almost felt like, like when he was around people that, that, that you, you, you know, that genius had to be switched on and he was always in like entertainment mode. And that's got to be draining because he was one of those guys that was just always, always, always on and, and, and yeah. clicking. Yeah, he took over, man. He took. He, yeah. He, I was just saying in the same way Jim Carrey, you know, I mean, he's, he's clearly struggles with mental health, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 but there's just, there's so, there's, you know, there's so many. I mean, just recently the guy, the, the young kid from the One Direction who just clearly just got bad mental health, trying to mask it like you do with drugs, yeah. alcohol, whatever, flipping out, you know jumped from a three-story window or was pissing about because he was high whatever yeah but it, it's just so apparent it, it, you know but it, it's a very weird thing you the only way i can really say it, you have tremendous highs and you have tremendous lows when you're in entertainment you know you want people to love you you're putting yourself out there on the line whether it's a comedian whether it's an actor whether it's all these all, all these artists you're putting yourself and your work out there and if if you believe that it's not liked or it's not loved, that's quite cutting to the core because you, yeah. you, you, you you're putting yourself out there and all you really want is to be accepted and it'd be fantastic if people love what you do. And if they don't, it's a fucking lonely place to, to, to go to. So Very. I think that is is one of them. But again, it's like it, it's sometimes when I hear myself talking, I'm thinking well, I ain't a soldier fighting in a war, or I'm not a fucking, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not a doctor doing brain surgery, and what I do isn't really that important. But I've said this to my mum, and my mum's like, well, hold up a minute. Then people that do that job, that you're thinking have got more right to complain about their mental health, don't do your fucking job. So how would they know 
what's going on in your mind. Everybody's different. Right, right, right. Like in their mind, they might say, geez, thank God I don't travel 300 days a year. Thank God I don't have to get up and play in front of 100,000 people. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. So, it's, hey, apple, it's apples to oranges. You know what I mean? Like they might yeah. think that you've got the bigger burden, you know? Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I just never I, – I, I, I never want to piss and moan about it, but I never want to shy away from – mental health because i feel like if there's a young kid who's into drums or there's some fun loving criminal fans or ub40 fans that, that struggle with it yeah. i like you no know, that frank he talks about it so yeah wrist so i'll maybe talk about it or maybe go to my doctor or maybe ask for some help or right what maybe do you know what i mean like and that's the one thing is you never know who needs to hear it and you never know who's listening you know what i mean and who is hearing it you know what i mean like i you, you know you never know who's going to be scrolling through youtube man and 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 uh, you know i think a lot of times certain books or interviews or movies or different things that are out there i think sometimes they find us in life when we need them you know what i mean yeah, yeah i think you're right man you know, I mean, I, I know I've come across like books sometimes where like, I, you know, why did somebody lend me this book or why did I take this book, uh, you know, out, 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 of the, out of the library or out of the bookstore or like, why did this thing come up on my radar? You know what I mean? Did it come up, you know, because somehow it was put here like by fate because, you know, I happen to need it at this juncture of my life, you know? Yeah, it could be. You know? It could be. The world's got a funny way of working stuff it out. Does. It yeah. does. So, so, uh, 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 so the UB40 thing, how does that come about? How, you, how, how do you end up on their radar and end up in their band? Cause they've been doing it for a long, long time. I mean, obviously probably a lot of people would love to drum in UB40. Uh, you know, uh, how do you end up the guy? Well, you know, it was re really, it just come from a, it come from a beautiful place really. And that was that place is Prince, um, you know, about, 10, 11, 11, 12 years ago now, me and Fast got stuck in an airport. <laughs> we missed our flight because we were eating KFC. And um, we we looked out the window and the plane was, you know, leaving. The th we were like, oh, shit, we missed this plane. We were, we were traveling to another country to play a show. So we had to wait and take the next plane the following morning. But as we sat there feeling sorry for ourselves with chicken grease all over our fingers, <laughs> we were like, you know, like we, we've got this, like we've been doing for a long time, we've been doing reggae remixes for people because we have a massive love for, for reggae music. Yeah. And um, got a big reggae collection as well. And we were like, about time we did an album, don't you think, as our working title, which was Radio Riddler. And we were like, yeah, let's do like, let's do what Easy Star All Stars have done, you know, which are this, this cool reggae outfit that over the years have done some iconic records. Like they did Dark Side of the Moon, called it Dub Side of the Moon. They did Thriller, Michael Jackson's Thriller. They've done, you know, they took the whole album and reggified it and we were like we should do that we should do that which is not you know it's it's it, that's something that reggae music's done since the birth of reggae music sure. you know? they just used to back in kingston they just copied 1950s rock and roll and put this skank beat on it and you can reggify anything yeah exactly so yeah. we were like you know it, it's nothing it's nothing that's not been done since the age of time when it comes to reggae music so we were like, yeah, let's do that. And I said to Fat, what do you want to do? And he says, let's do Purple Rain soundtrack. I said, absolutely not. That will not work. You know what I mean? No one should ever try and do any of Prince's songs ever because I'm the biggest Prince fan. At, sacred, gr at sacred Ground. Yeah. Sacred. <laughs> and then he said, well, I'll make you a deal. He says, if we could, can we just give it a go and start with the biggest song, which was Purple Rain? Sure. Which which on the Purple Rain album is the last song of yeah. the record. Yep. The nine song album. First song um, is uh, Let's Go Crazy. Let's go crazy. Yep. We, we, we said, well, let's start with the biggest. And there, there is no bigger song than Purple Rain for Prince. So we tried it. It sounded fucking great. It was like, oh my God, you know. So I get on there and I, and I do the singing and, and we do all that. And then we did that with the other eight songs on the album. So we got the whole album as a reggae album. And then it was like, this is too good. This is like really too good. Um, so let's ring around some people and see if they want to come on board and guest sing. And the list was pretty tall order. And um, uh, like our wish list, it's like, well, there's no way we're going to get 
there's no way that we're going to get Sinead O'Connor on this album, even though she would sound amazing singing yeah. I Would Die For You. It yeah. was beautiful to hear her sing it. And then through the fate of rock and roll, I find myself at a show. Sinead's there. I go backstage. I'm like, I should know Frank from the criminals. She's like, ah, oh, Frank, you all right? So I says, yeah, Cassie, can I roll you a spliff? And she went, yeah, man, absolutely. So I rolled her a spliff in the dressing room, blazed her up, and, uh, and she was smoking, and we were giggling and stuff. I said, I said, I've got this record I want you to sing on. She went, yeah, what's that? I said, I want you to do uh, another Prince song. She went, I'll never do another Prince song, ever. I was like, oh, shit. You know, because... There's this, I think there's a little bit of bad blood there between Sinead and Prince, there was. And Sinead just had the biggest international number one with Nothing Compares to You, you know, fantastic song. Yeah. Fantastic cover. And um, she was like, I've just got no need to do any more Prince. I was so like, cool. And then I just left it. And she was finishing a joint. And just as she took her last drag, I went, it is in a reggae style. And she went, oh, yeah, all right, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> that sealed it. So I sent it to her and she called me and said, I love it. She said, I'll do it. I said, okay, cool. So I flew over a couple of weeks later. We were in Dublin and we went in the studio, just me, her and an engineer. And she did it and it was fucking amazing. She was so beautiful. I uh, had such a fun afternoon with her, bless her. You know, another artist that's had tremendous battles with mental health and sadly, yes. way, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, but I was very grateful to to spend the day in the studio with such a lovely woman. Um, and we got, it's, I don't know if you've heard it, but it's absolutely fantastic. It's like a lover's rock version that she does. It's on Spotify. If you ever want to check it out, I it's will a Riddler purple reggae. And then we thought, okay, well let's go to some other people. So we went to one another, and then, you know, I got it to Ali Campbell, the legend that is Ali Campbell, you before to, and he got the biggest song. And I sent it to him and he was like, Prince in reggae. I said, yeah. He went, hmm. I said, it's Purple Rain. We've, we've saved the best one for you, you know. He said, send it to me. I'll see. I sent it to him. Within an hour, he called me back. He went, it's fucking genius. He goes, this completely works. He goes, I don't know how you've done this, but this works amazingly. I said, will you do it then? Will you track it? He went, I've already tracked it. I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> And he sent it to me. And to this date, our version of Purple Rain featuring Ali Campbell with Radio Riddler is mine and Fast Biggie's hit. It surpasses all from Love and Criminal work. It's, it's huge. It's had something like, with the counts on the different websites that it's on and the YouTube channels, it's had something like 150 million downloads. But if I'm not mistaken, though, when I had you on last year, didn't you tell me a story once about covering a Prince song and it got to his manager and then uh, you got a phone call and he was in the background? Yeah, um, David Kakakis. Uh, yeah. EM, uh, no, Universal, sorry, in Hollywood, yeah. He, um, he found and, Prince, and Prince wanted to know what you were going to do with the song. <laughs> yeah, he did. He wanted to know what, what, what was happening. And I said, well, listen, you know, we, we, you're – you own it we've done this out of the we've done this out of the love for reggae music and my love for prince which is you know and it was funny because I, I think i told you we were t i was telling stories to david because obviously prince was in the room didn't talk and um but the end of that the end of that phone call which let, let's put it straight the beginning of that phone call i was told prince was not happy and right. he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna let this go out at the end of that phone call prince never stopped it from coming out which tells me the few things that i told him you know what he mean what he meant to me yeah as a as a, as a young kid what got me into music and then the story that everybody that i mean there's some legends on there you got sits and cope on there you got beverly knight one of the greatest r b singers from the uk you've got Suggs from madness massive band you know you've got deborah bonham john bonham from led zeppelin sister singing on it amazing blues artist over here in europe and um, you've got ali campbell um you've got myself for loving uncle frank singing one naeem sings one um yeah it's it, it's it's an amazing amazing album and there's a dub version of it as well which is sick 
And um, but that's how it come about. Going back to your question, how did you before he come about? It was working with Radio Riddler, and, and now Ali was like, well, what is this Radio Riddler? So we sent him on Mix CD, and we sent him a clip of our live show, which is us doing Purple Rain in its entirety. That's the show. And um, he loved it. So he then persisted to take us on tour with him around the world for like a three, four, four or five-year period. We were opening up for him all over America, which was amazing um all over the, so then when it comes to the sad news like three years ago of um astro passing away the, yeah. one of the original members with that with ali astro who sang the famous rat in my kitchen and wicked chin um he passed away and then I, ali was he was not in a good place and he said would you come down to the first couple of shows and you know, be this moral support. And I used to bring them on stage, I'd hype the crowd up, yeah, you know, get them all chanting and bring Ali out to a marvellous reception and then bang, we're going to the set. And he was like, would you come and do this on these on these first few arena shows? We're talking massive, you know, massive shows. And um, I said, no problem, bro. It'd be my pleasure to do, you know. And then we're at the first show and I'm just... So I'm not the drummer in you before. It. I am singer hype man percussion player okay and but at the first show well, well we went we, we went into a big empty arena the o2 dome in london massive and um we went in the day before to do the sound check and i said to him he walked over and what do you think of the show what do you think i says i says yeah it's cool i goes but like you want me at all these shows and all you want me to do is big the crowd up and bring you on and then wait for the whole show and then at the end get the crowd hyped up bring you back on i said so i'm just going to be stuck i may as well be stood on stage playing percussion and doing the bvs and doing all the in-between songs and stuff he went well would you do that then i went yeah and he says all right what percussion do you need so i gave him a list of what i needed and it was there the next day for the first night no rehearsals so I just, I got the set, went home into my hotel that night, listened to it all, made loads of notes. All right, it's tambourine on this song, on the second verse is a cowbell, and this is, and I made all the notes. And then, you know, my first performance with them was no rehearsals in the O2 Dome at London, in it. Wow. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, that's great to hear that they're still going strong, though, too, because they're a band that's been, uh, you, you know, doing it for a long time. 45 years yeah that's incredible that's incredible yeah, yeah that's really incredible hey I, yeah, I mean there's prince bringing people together every time bro even, every time. even posthumously he's still fucking doing it well here's the interesting thing when i spoke to ali and you know and um back in the late 80s they were going through minneapolis and prince invited them to uh the club in minneapolis in uh minneapolis grand slam i think it's called isn't it and um he, he invited them, paid for drinks and everything. So Prince knew exactly a year before it was. So it's kind of nice that, you know, it's yeah. probably one of the reasons why Prince, Prince obviously thought, wow, all these iconic singers like Suggs from Madness, Ali, you know, Sits and Coach, Sinead O'Connor, Beverly Not, all these people are done, are come on Radio Riddler's album, no money. No yeah. one got one penny. Yeah. No one, no one got paid for it. And um, they just did it for the love of Prince and the love of reggae music. And I think when Prince heard that, and he knew we were doing it independently, he 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 gave it his blessing. Because let me tell you something: if he didn't want your album to come out, he could stop it like that overnight. Exactly. Yeah, I know. For years, I mean, he kept all of his music and videos off of YouTube and all that stuff. Yeah, it was hard to get. It was it was it was it was, it was hard to get anything of his unless unless, like you say, he okayed it. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it, and that's his right, you know, like he always say, he, you know, that each song he ever wrote was like one of his babies. And when someone messes with it, it's like him messing with the kid. When he yeah. puts it like that, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know. And like, we'll never see anybody else. I, I, I don't think we'll ever see anybody else in his league at all in our lifetime. No, you won't. You know, it was the 21st century Mozart, full stop. Yeah. You'll yeah. never you'll never get and you get a load of people thinking that they're him <laughs> yeah 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 
I, you, you're fact, the, I mean, the fact that he stayed current, though, and always seemed to be cutting edge, and, you know, a lot of people would just say, oh, yeah, I remember Prince from the 80s. But even when you think about him and, and, and you put aside those 80s pop songs and you think even when he came well into the 2000s, he was always on the cutting edge of fashion and, the you know, and the hippest dance moves and just, uh, you know, he was always up on, on everything and had his ear to the pavement. He was in, you know, he was in on the ground level of, like, releasing his songs, you know, uh, uh, on the Internet and through his website and everything. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I don't think he ever felt like dated. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, it always felt like Prince always felt like, you know, even though he started way back in the 70s, it, it always felt like, you know, he, uh, he gave you that feeling like he, he could have came out yesterday, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I, you hear songs like um, Soft and Wet or you hear songs like I Want to Be Your Lover. Yeah, and the they, sound, they, they sounded like they recorded last month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, he still got the power to get people out on the dance floor right now in 2024 with with almost all of his all of his upbeat songs. Yeah, absolutely. If you're in, if you're in any nightclub around the world, and the DJ plays the 12 inch version of Kiss, yeah. you dance your ass off. And, and the so. other great thing is, every hot girl in the club will be on the fucking dance floor. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so for people that want to know. Uh, 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 you know, how to find out everything that's going on with you, man. Like, where do they go? Obviously, Fun Loving Criminals has got a website. Yeah, or, or, or we're, we're kind of more up to date on the Instagram. So if you go to Fun Loving Crims on Instagram, you can see what we're up to there. Okay. Uh, we've got some shows coming up. We've got one down in London in about a week and a half's time. Then we're over to Prague to play a festival in Prague. And then we go over to the Netherlands and Belgium on the 27, 28, 29, and 30th of November. And then if you want to check out all the cool things with Uncle Frank, you can go to the website, www.unclefrankband.com, um, and you'll see that we've got some shows. Keep your eye out for the new uh, movie documentary, which soon as i know what format that's coming on i'll reach out to your brother and i'll let you know please. yeah please do and what about I, I, the radio? Like, you, know, you know what i'd love to do as well but you'll have to keep it private i'd love to send you a link so you could watch the film please do and, of course yeah, let, I, I, yeah I, i've had musicians on here before like you know what i mean like send me like you know like little snippets or like songs and stuff like just to kind of get my feedback yeah absolutely i will do for sure keep it under wraps you have my word on yeah. it i i would love to i i, I would love to give it a, a, a peep well, I'd love to just hear what you think, uh, what you think about it, especially on the, on the, um, uh, on the side. I mean, it, it, it's it's super cool to watch because, unlike when I've just watched um, a couple of other music documentaries, they're about one thing. You know, if you watch a music right. documentary about Metallica, it's just about Metallica. Right. Where if you watch, um, if you watch this. Like it's like how many bands do I play in? I forget how many bands I'm in, and and, and what's this? You're dealing with this mental health stuff. It, yeah. There's a few feathers to the bow with this, and I think yeah. that's. I just love to hear your your feedback on how you think it flows. Actually, what's the best way to send it via email, or like what's the easiest way to do it? I'll send you a link through Vimeo. You just click on it, you'll be able to watch it. It'll be on a private link, and so you'll send it like on my Facebook Messenger. Yeah, I can send it. I can send it to. Um, to your phone you know like we've been messaging to yeah 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 i'll perfect. just send you a link on that perfect yeah i look forward to that man listen man i always love chopping it up with you man man and i and i i'm glad that we spent a good part of this interview talking about the, the you know the stuff that we did talk about because i do think it's important and you never know who's going to come across this interview if one person even comes across it and it's helped by anything that you said about mental health man then that's a victory man you know yeah. without well, a doubt i'm very grateful for your time again you're a top brother I love um, it, man. Yeah. Respect, man, and go and check out some of our music. The 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 latest Always. Uncle Frank album's called Diablo. It's on Spotify and all your Believe others. me, I'm always watching what you guys do. I love what you guys yeah. do because I find it very hard. You know, I have a lot of musicians on here, and with all due respect to the people I have on here, man, I I, I don't just pull their name out of a hat. I have them on here for a reason because they have come on my radar, and I do love what they do. And it is hard sometimes to find people, as I said earlier, doing music where they're coming from interesting places. You know, I mean, like where you feel like. 
you know, where you don't feel like, geez, I've heard this before. This sounds yeah. like something else. You know what I mean, there's very few bands, uh, you know, who can kind of scratch that itch, you know what I mean, who are really coming from a lot of different cool places. You know what I mean? Like you guys with the, you know, with the alternative, but the jazz in there and the hip hop and the, you know what I mean, I, you know, I, I love that kind of stuff. It keeps the music world fresh and interesting. Sick, man. Well, 2025. Brand new, fun of Can't wait. Back. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, man. I can't wait, and I think fans are going to be excited about that. And I look forward to you sending me the clip. I'll watch it tonight. I, as soon as you can send it, I'll watch it. Yeah, so I've just, I've just got to, I've just got to watch the rest of it myself. Yeah, and then when I'm happy with it, I'll send you the link. Please do. I look forward to that, man. And I always look forward to talking with you. And of course, we're in touch, man. So uh, we'll, uh, when the yeah. album comes out or we get closer to it, uh, we'll definitely do it again. Wicked. Yeah. Big love, brother. Big love. Yeah. Same to you, brother. I love Take talking, care. man. Yeah, always a blast, man. Thanks, Frank. Big up, man. Yeah, happy Halloween. I love the backdrop, man. You brought it festive tonight, man. You brought Thank it you. festive. Thank you, I tried. Let's yeah. just say my little dog before we go. There she is. There she is. And, and the dog's name is? Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Perfect. Now, that's a way to end the podcast right there, man. Let the dog take us straight out, you know? Let the, let the dog get some love. Yeah, Where yeah. I always love talking to you, my brother. Thank you so much, man. A pleasure, as always. Take care, man. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Frank. Later, brother. Bro. Later. There he goes, folks. The great Frank Benbini, Uncle Frank, the man behind the kit for the legendary Fun Loving Criminals, a band that I defy you to fucking fit into a fucking genre. One of the coolest, most eclectic, original, and just uh, uh, freshest fucking bands out there, man. Uh, uh, I don't put many bands in that category. Uh, as you know, I've been talking up the co-defendants recently. They're a band that attacks it from a lot of different angles. Uh, love a band like Faith No More, fusing so many different kinds of music in there. Uh, my boys back here, of course, Rude Boy, the Urban Dance Squad. Uh, just, just You can't put these bands into a fucking uh, a genre. Uh, uh, they just will not be confined. I mean, the Fun Loving Criminals will give you uh, 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 Latin vibes and hip-hop and alt rock and fucking uh, 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 jazz and fucking soul. I mean, they're just a band that's coming at you from a million different directions, man. And they seamlessly fuse it all together and make it fucking work. And uh, Frank Benbini, man, my boy, is a big fucking part of that, man. Uh, I love him and I always love chopping up with him. And I certainly fucking love and respect the fact that he was so candid and honest in talking about uh, uh, mental health, particularly with men, which is not a difficult or which assumes me, which is not an easy uh, thing for guys to do. We do find it difficult at times to process our emotions and to get them out there. And thankfully, uh, uh, many people uh, in all walks of life are now stepping forward and saying, hey, I have issues with anxiety, with depression, with this and that. So uh, a big salute to him. Uh, I look forward to him uh, signing off on this documentary movie, which sounds like it deals with a lot of mental health, because I think it's important uh, to put uh, art like that out into the world. And uh, you just never know, as I said at the end of the interview there, you never know who's going to hear it and who needs to hear it and who it's going to go out into the ether and, and find. Probably somebody that needs to hear it or see it. So, uh, And, of course, go check out the Fun Loving Criminals and everything that they do. Check out Uncle Frank, uh, 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 his uh, other band that he does, uh, and just uh, uh, support the music. Support the music. And the exciting news is uh, uh, a new full-length, uh, fun loving criminals coming in 2025 that is epic fucking news it's been a fucking long time coming so fans get fucking excited uh i got excited and got goosebumps the minute uh frank uh mentioned it uh had a couple of great eps in the last couple of years though 2022 the roosevelt sessions and 2023 the capistrano sessions are out there on streaming platforms and out there wherever you listen to music so fucking check them out man the fun loving criminals are always bringing you uh, something dope and something fucking interesting and innovative, man. Uh, they're always on the cutting edge of of just awesome sounds and just cool, cool fucking music, man. Call it what you want. We threw around a lot of titles there. Lounge funk. Uh, just It's almost laughable, uh, uh, the many different dimensions and the many different genres that you could put fun-loving criminals in, and yet uh, uh, you can't fit them into just fucking one. Uh, uh, they're all encompassing and, uh, uh, there's, there's bits and pieces of them in every different genre, or should I say every different genre, uh, is encompassed in fun, loving criminals. I don't know if any of that fucking made sense, but I can't talk up the fun, loving criminals enough. They've been bringing me, uh, uh, so much joy in my life, uh, for so many fucking years, man. Like I said, sometimes it's hard to find, 
uh, cutting edge music where you don't feel like this is a little stale or I've been there, done this. The fun love of criminals never fucking make me feel that way. They're always delivering men. And uh, just, I, I'm excited. I'm excited about a new album in 2025, a full length, not an EP, a fully realized LP from the fun loving criminals. So that's exciting, man. Always love talking it up with my man, Frank Benbini. Uh, uh, just uh, an amazing conversation, man. I can't say that enough, man. I'm glad we touched on the stuff that we touched on, man. And and uh, uh, it spilled over into more than just talking about music. Because there is important shit out there to talk about other than just uh, uh, music. You know, there's deep topics, man. And I love when my guests get into uh, really diving in and uh, really having a heart-to-heart -heart like that. I think conversations like that uh, need to be out there. They need to be heard. And uh, uh, if even if nobody hears them, I think they're conversations that just guys, you know, I'll benefit from it. Frank will benefit from it, I hope. Uh, you, you know what I mean? So even if nobody else hears it, uh, I took something away from it, man, something important away from it, man. I'll process it. I'll watch it back. I'll listen to it. And uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of teaching moments in there for me as well. Uh, Frank shared a lot of his own journey, man. And uh, there's always something to be taken away when people are communicating and sharing. So uh, lovely conversation, man. Always appreciate Frank. Make sure to like and follow Pod Scum on Facebook. Uh, do your civic duty. Stay tapped in. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on this channel. You know it. I know it. This is where the cool kids come to chop it up with your boy, Rex Ruger. No place else. And that conversation was fucking proof. And let me make sure that I still look fucking good and I still look like my pops up there, Diamond Dave. Yep, the quaff is still in fucking order, man. I'm still looking good. And again, you know how I do it, kids. Right there. Get yourself some. And as I always say, you probably won't look this good because that's damn near impossible. But you should look pretty good. Get your hair in order, man, and do the rock star thing. You won't be able to pull it off like I can, but I've got the Roth jeans, so I got a little bit of an advantage. But, hey, don't hate, congratulate. And uh, that being said, man, let me remind you guys always to take it easy and keep it sleazy.